Hello, welcome. In this video, as you can see from my colorful lemon and lime title right here, we're going to look at polynomial functions and the graphs of polynomial functions. The first thing we should say is that polynomial graphs are smooth and continuous. So polynomial graphs, we know that they are smooth and continuous. Are smooth and continuous. Now, that might bring something visual to your mind, like you might have a picture of what this means, but we should show you. Let's talk about that. So um, if we have a graph, so let's look at an example of smooth and continuous. So smooth means that the curvature isn't rough, right? That's a really subjective definition, but the smoothness here, you can see in this graph, this is smooth, right? And it's continuous, there are no there are no breaks in the graph. So this is a polynomial graph, yes. Now, what if you have something like this? It's going along, it's smooth, right? And then all of a sudden, it takes a sharp turn. Then it goes smooth and then cuts right back. And then smooth everywhere else. Well, the two issues here are this turn and this sharp one here, which is maybe not drawn the best by me. It's like a, kind of like a rough edge, sharp edge right there. Sometimes you refer to these things that this is a cusp, which is a really sharp turn, or a corner, and those aren't necessarily objective definitions. They're just words describing the parts that are not smooth. So this is not a smooth graph, so it's not a polynomial graph. No, it's not. And then finally, uh, we look at a graph that's smooth, and then all of a sudden, maybe stops here and then bounces, starts to bounce up the open circle and a break here, and then it goes on. So this is smooth except at this spot where the graph is undefined, and this spot right, this spot right here where it breaks. So we have an undefined spot, undefined, and we have a break. So this is um, this is not continuous. So continuous, as you can see, is a graph where there are no holes or breaks. All right, so this is not a polynomial function. So when we say continuous, we mean there's no spots where it's undefined, there's no spots where it's broken and smooth, there are no essentially sharp turns. And we're not going to um, ask you to interpret a graph that's not somewhat obvious at this point. You're going to see a sharp turn or a clear break, and if you see that, you know it's not a polynomial graph. What about a polynomial equation? Let's look at that next. So polynomial equation. Polynomial equation. And here, the, the main goal when we look at polynomial equations, let's just say in general, and we, we look at them and we're trying to focus on a couple of things. We're focusing on the leading terms, and we'll specify what that is. That's important. And we're trying to look at the zeros or the roots of the polynomial. And we're also looking at what's called the multiplicity, which we'll get to soon. That's the exponent or the power of each of the roots. Now, in general, a polynomial equation, let's call it p of x, is something written where you have a coefficient an times x to the n power. And this highest term, it's a non-zero term, right? An is not zero, otherwise this would just cancel out. This is the highest power, and we call this whole thing the leading term, and it tells you the, the degree of your polynomial. So this is a leading term, and p of x has a degree of n. So whatever that leading exponent is in the leading term, that's your degree. And then we go along, we have another coefficient matching with the next power of x, and so on and so forth, all the way as we work our way down, to some constant times x to the first plus just a constant here at the end that could be zero. And although the leading term here can't have a coefficient of zero, the other coefficients can be zero, which we'll see in a moment, but just the leading term can't have a zero, otherwise you wouldn't know what your degree is. So we say uh, there are two things here to think about. The leading coefficient is not zero and n has to be positive. And that's because suppose you had x to the negative one Right, x to the negative 1, for example, if n was negative, that would be 1 over x. And this is not a polynomial function. 
clearly this would be undefined if x were 0, because 1 divided by 0 would be undefined. So we don't allow for those negative exponents that would create holes in your, in your graph. So why do we care about leading terms? Let's start there. Why is that so important? Well, this leading term right here determines the shape of your graph. So we can say that. Go back down. So leading terms. Here's this is kind of amazing. So leading terms, what do they do? They tell you the, the shape and the end behavior. So they tell the end behavior of a graph behavior. And why is that? Well, it's because um, since the highest powers, right, the largest exponents you have matter the most, matter the most as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So, we'll, and we'll be able to prove this, but suppose you have some polynomial function and we know that the leading term, say I'll call it LT for leading term, let's say our leading term, right, is both odd and the coefficient of leading term, AN, is positive. The amazing thing is that if you have an odd polynomial, now just as a base for myself, what I'm going to sketch is a cubic function. This shape right here, you don't have to sketch it yet, just take a look at this, something like this. Now this is an odd polynomial, x to the third. But if you have x to the fifth, or x to the seventh, or x to the ninth, or even x to the first, even though different stuff will happen in the middle, the end behavior will be the same. So I'm going to highlight the end behavior, this piece here, and this piece here. We don't necessarily know what hap what's happening in the middle, so I'm going to indicate that with a dashed line. Right? It could be a really flat one, it could be, um, it could have several bounces in it, right? not too sharp a return. But we don't know what's happening in the middle here, we just know that the end behavior is going to look just like it would for a cubic function. And what does that mean? Well, in this direction right here, let's say you have an x value and you keep going up in x values, you look at the height of the graph and you see it's going up and up and up. So it tells you as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity, and over here, as x approaches negative infinity, positive infinity, y is getting higher and higher, y approaches negative infinity. So that's pretty amazing, right? And also we can say, well, what if the leading term is odd, but is odd, but the coefficient now is less than zero? And it's exactly what you might want it to be. Instead of behaving like positive x cubed, it's got to behave like negative x cubed. All right, let me, let me be consistent with my shape here. So I'm going to use black. Just, this is a negative, say this is about negative x cubed. And on the ends here, it doesn't matter what the power is, as long as the leading term is an odd degree. We call that power of the degree. We don't really know what's happening in the middle, but we know the end behavior. We know that as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And over here, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And what you could say in all of these cases is that um, here, when the coefficient is negative, x and y are approaching different things for odd, for odd degrees. Whereas over here, x and y are both approaching positive or both approaching negative infinity. So that's a way to sum up what you're seeing right here. And then we can look at um, for the leading terms being even. I'm going to erase that. So the leading term is even and the coefficient is positive versus the leading term is even and that leading coefficient is negative. So this also, I, I think, is maybe exactly what you might expect. So for an odd polynomial degree, they look like cubic functions in the end behavior. For an even polynomial degree, it's going to look like a parabola. A parabola is in the form, let's say, x squared as, as an even degree. Well, if we sketch out a quick parabola where the coefficient is positive, something like this, the end behavior right here describes all even degree polynomials. What happens in the middle here, in the interim, that's not um, so easy to predict. We have, need other we have other tools for that, but it's not going to be based on the leading term. And then over here, I'm just going to first sketch out both and then talk about what we see. Here's the parabola with a negative leading coefficient. 
and look at our end behavior here. So what I often do when I'm trying to imagine the end behavior of a polynomial function, I will sketch out a parabola if it's an even degree, or a cubic function if it's an odd degree, and then uh, it'll have a, if it's a parabola, I'll have it open upwards if it's a positive coefficient, and open downward if it's a negative coefficient. Then looking at the graph, I can make sense of it. I say as x approaches positive infinity, so does y. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And over here, when we have a negative coefficient, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And here, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Now, what I have to think about here is that with a negative coefficient, both of the y values are approaching negative infinity, whichever direction x is going in. Whereas if we have a positive coefficient, we can see that the y is approaching positive infinity, regardless of the direction that x is going in. And that's a nice way to maybe summarize this. So all of this work right here tells you the value of a leading term. In the next video, we're going to look at the value of zeros. All right, thanks.